Go to getamazonnow.com and give a gift card. Welcome to Black and White Recovery. Your hosts have been associated with recovery programs for over 50 years. This show is not associated or related to any 12-step program. The advice is strictly to be taken as advice, or it may be used for drinking games. Always consult with your sponsor, attorney, doctor, or anyone with more common sense other than Lee. I refuse to say that I'm dry for the last 20 some odd years. I'm far too intellectual to agree to that statement. I am believe... Well, there's nobody too dumb for this program, just people that are too smart. Uh, I think I'm too smart. Okay, that's not fair. I do (laughs) practice quite a few of these principles. Uh, I want to talk about a principle. As one of the episodes. Uh, We're back to it again. This is where we started uh, when we first started recording, which is the principle of honesty. Okay. Is it possible to be honest all the time? Uh, With yourself? Uh, Well, is that the only trick that's required? Because I don't know if you can really be honest 100% of the time in the real world. No, I, 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 well, without hurting somebody's feelings, absolutely not. So I would say, uh, you know, it goes back to uh, does uh, my ass look fat in this dress? Um, but I, I, I know in the book that they they mention rigorous self honesty. Hmm. So I just have to make sure that I don't bullshit myself being somebody that I'm not and doing things that I really shouldn't do. Is that ultimately what it comes down to? Is it just? When people say honesty, they're referring to honesty with yourself? Uh, I hope so. That's how I took it. (laughs) I don't know. It it took me 11 years to clean, to give up a life of crime. So, you know, but eventually I gave it up. And I, and I regret every day after. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. Best decision I ever made. Well, I'm not, but you know, as we talked previously, I'm, you know, I'm sure that there are things that could likely become triggers in my life that would make me want to feel uh, a reason to escape. Right. Mm -hmm. I guess that's, that's a a very true reality. But if I told someone and I was honest about it. Right. Wouldn't that sort of defeat it from the beginning? Like, okay. We're in the holiday season, and there are people going through, my only guess, stressful things. I I personally just tend to avoid family and friends and stressful things through the holidays for strictly the point of, what's the point? There do, there doesn't seem to be any logical you know any logical reason. Right. To, I I. Uh, it's almost, is it just me or people sort of sadomasochist when it comes to the holidays? Like, you know what's going to happen when you see your family. If that's a trigger for you, why would you go and do it? Right. Exactly. So, but because we lack the ability to be honest about those situations, right? Um, we're afraid to tell people how we really feel. Well, I think with family, again, there's a fine line between hurting somebody's feelings and having impenetrable boundaries. But aren't those all relatively, aren't we discussing the same things? It's like not apples and oranges here. I mean, I mean, the true reality of the subject, I'll use real time example. Um, I don't get along well with my family, period. End of sentence. My mother is a great person. But in her mind, I am still the same 25-year-old kid who doesn't have his shit together. Um, How do I put this in a way that you would understand? Let's say you had someone in your life that you loved, Ian, and they decided to sell a piece of property without you in your backyard. Okay. Because they perceive you as the same fuck-up you always were. Right. Right. Happens a lot. At, Happens with family. Right. And at what point does it become, I just don't need that in my life. I don't need to, you know, the, you know, call the dog nicely and then get swatted with the nose, get swatted over the, the nose with a piece of newspaper mentality. Right. Like, I don't need to hear 
from my sister. What is it exactly that you do? Right. I I don't I don't need that I don't need that in my life. I don't. So I remove that drama completely, and I live a happier life now. When asked directly of, hey, how come you don't want to come to any family events? I don't know, because you're all a bunch of assholes. Right. Um, am I being offensive because I'm being honest? Or am I just setting straight boundaries? Or am I doing both? I think you do. Well, there, like I said, there's a fine line. There's a balance between it. It's hard to set boundaries without hurting somebody's feelings. Oh, I, I completely agree about that. But at the end of the day, last the talent I've mastered. Last time I checked, even in the grand scheme of things, it's God, me, and then everybody else, right? That's basically the build order for a sober person, whether or not they want to admit it. You can't put other people's feelings in front of your own. Um, I love my daughter more than oxygen. Right. I will physically right. I will physically kill people like I don't. Right. There's no quite. They can go and find many a broadcast of me doing something somewhere where I w- I have said point blank that if something bad happened to my daughter, that person and their family is dead. And I have no issue. Right. With, like I have no lock me up. I'm willing to go, yeah. stick the needle in my neck. I'll probably kill myself after I'm done with the event. But the bloodline that ended my bloodline is going to die. That's just the way I roll. And I know that's. Oh, you're just talking shit, Lee. You'd never. No, you're wrong. You're you're literally yeah. wrong. I don't know how. Uh, what is it? Uh, what is it? Uh, the the kid who got murdered in the the Simpson murder. Uh, how Ron, Ron Goldman. Goldman's fan, like how he's like, yeah, I just want justice. I don't want justice. I I don't want justice. If I really thought OJ did it, he'd be dead. He would physically be dead. He. Either he has doubt that that's the correct person, which he never seemed to have. Um, I, and I just want to clarify that as a point for everybody to understand. But if I, if my daughter was doing something that was negative towards me that made me feel bad and or she thought I was having a negative effect on her life, I'd be the bigger person and remove myself from that situation. I believe that even my daughter at age 12, she and I have the kind of dialogue where we can talk about those things. But I've worked pretty meticulously hard on staying sober so that I can provide for her or provide for others in my life. I mean, that's just a logical point of view. Um, And I've always kind of maintained that I'm really sorry that someone died. I'm really sorry that that person's sick. I'm really sorry that I've got the flu. But at the end of the day, I've got to do whatever I've got to do to keep myself going because... At a certain point, you realize that people are relying on you to do something. You 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 actually have a level of responsibility. It's almost people who don't want to be honest don't want to take responsibility. Okay. Is that a fair statement? They don't want to face responsibility. Yes, yes. Is there something that generally... I mean, when you're talking to people in the program... And I'm sure you've had your fair share of the, let's just make 35 the cutoff points. Below the age of 35, already have a kid, already split up in the relationship. They're already worried about seeing their kid enough and worrying about them being a stripper or not being a stripper. Trying to hold out of jobs, chain smoking, barely keep the car running. You sponsor that person, right? That is a sponsee in your universe. Mm Mm-hmm. Do they realize the level of responsibility that they actually have? Or are they blaming drinking and using as the reason they can't move forward? No, they're blaming the ex and the and the child support payments on why they can't move forward. That's unbelievable to me. Like, it's literally unbelievable to me. I... Whether or not anybody wants to admit it, people, and here's something that I've had to accept, people will go on if I were to die tomorrow. And there are a lot of people relying on the money that I make. And I make uh, a pretty good living. And the money that I make all goes somewhere. Uh, But I also believe that if I were to die tomorrow, I think everybody's going to get by without me. I think the world will keep turning. There will be 
a handful of people that are sad, and it will be just a handful. I admit that. Um, but by and large, the world will keep going. You know. I hope it's a big hand. It's not a big hand. It's not. It's no, not. It's, it's really hand. not. I'm kind of. Not like a King I'm Kong generally hand. kind of a douchebag, and I. Is it like a Trump hand? Small it, it's not or? a baby hand. It's kind of a moderate hand. No. But I, you know what? I accept that I am generally not everybody's taste, except for those that are around me. Like I've surrounded my people. I've, you know, we talked about this previously. I am surrounded by uh, people that I want, not necessarily want what they have, but like-minded. I'm not hanging around with people that are, you know, were. I think it's my responsibility to get what I want. Okay. And you know, I can't. I can't blame my recovery on. You know, oh, I want what they have. But unless you're willing to take the suggestions to do what they did, you're not going to get what they have. But you and I both know that in the next couple of weeks, uh, it, when you go to a meeting or if I were, I'll make it clear to everybody, if I were to go to a meeting, we're going to hear yeah. about the guy who went to dinner and got all glazed up by his family and felt really good about being there with them and then suddenly had all the air deflated by his family on him. And not set good right. boundaries and literally walk into a complete sucker punch by the family. Because right. reality, I'm going to say this for anybody listening. The reality, if you have less than a couple of years sober, you have less than a couple of years sober. They don't believe you. They they just don't. They're, they're not. You can't, you can't drive into the jungle for 10 years and expect to get out. Right. Too. You just can't. You, re, you really, I, I realize that... My, my t- 10, but it's going to take you longer than two. So if I'm that person who's got a couple of years sober and I know that I don't have a great relationship with my father, why would I go hang out with my father? Right. Exactly. Um, and you and I both know, again, with certainty, as you go to a meeting tonight or tomorrow, or if I were to go, we're going to hear that story. Like, this, that story's a flat out given this time of year. That's coming out of somebody's mouth. And they're going to stand there scratching their head and how they had to, you know, and then it goes back to, you know, I was really thinking about drinking. It was all so stressful for me. And then luckily the phone rang and I got myself to a meeting. How did it get to that point, bro? Like how, like, how did it get to that point? Yeah. Why, why do you let it get there? Why do you even you go? go? This yeah. was the first year where I flat out and hey don't get me wrong i'm a pot and a kettle and it's way black at this moment 20 mm-hmm. some odd years where i finally was yeah i don't even want my daughter around you guys i don't want whatever negative icky shit you guys got going on to rub off on my perfectly good child okay i don't she doesn't she doesn't need to be a part of it like i don't this is a true story we, i went to an event picked up my dad who i've never had a good relationship with um, and watched my daughter, uh, age 12, explain to my mother with just a head shake and a, and a frown of what the drive was like over to my sister's house of our conversation. That's just, fuck you, Dad. I mean, seriously, can't you keep your shit in your pants? I don't need to be around it. And I can say that. And, and again, pot, kettle, and definitely black. It's taken me 22 years to be grown up enough to go, I don't, you know, I don't need, I I don't want to sound shitty about it, but I don't need that in my life. I don't need you in my life if you're going to be that person. I don't, you know, it's really difficult and it makes me really sad because uh, I think all of us, uh, I can safely say that the traumatic event for me is, you know, daddy didn't love me. But at some point, I'm I'm a 48 year old going. Hmm, I I can't I I can't keep doing that. You can't you can't constantly be seeking out attention and constantly looking for it if you know what it is. And I just see this time of the year specifically. I'm looking at not a few. I mean, I'm gonna be very nice. Those of you listening. I guarantee as you listen to this, there are those of you who have family problems and you can't be honest with your own family. No, they let me back into their house. They're giving me a chance. 
Yeah, yeah, if they're shitty to you, they're going to be shitty to you. I don't want to be... The